What an incredible franchise. Who would have thought that one movie being released in the 1970s would have such a groundbreaking cultural impact, not just on fiction, but the entire film industry itself. And not only that, with the creation of the NES, there were great video games that came for the Star Wars series as well. Notably, one of my favorites is the Super Star Wars series for the Super Nintendo. But one thing about Star Wars that's really important to remember is that the people who hate Star Wars the most are the fans of Star Wars. If you talk to any Star Wars fan, there's always going to be something about it that they don't like. Whether it be the new movies, whether it be the prequel movies, or whether it be the remastering of the original trilogy. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the newest Star Wars movies. I think they're visually very impressive. But as far as story, eh, 7 and 8 were kind of meh. But Rogue One was really, really good. And even though me personally, I don't love every single Star Wars thing ever created, there are some things that I really do enjoy, and some things that I don't. <clears throat> but today, my focus is going to be the old original trilogy. Now, everyone knows that George Lucas re-released uh, the Star Wars movies with a digital adaptation, adding more like CG and adding like different things to scenes and stuff like that for the original trilogy. And while some of the shots, such as um, any planet shots exploring, seeing the vastness of the planet, were pretty good, there was some little bits that people had their gripes with. The first one would obviously be the bar fight between uh, Greedo and Han Solo. Everybody knows Han shot first, but they did this like edit thing where like Greedo shoots first, and they like moved Harrison Ford's, Ford's body, so it was just like, uh, but like his face didn't change, and then he shot Greedo, which I think kind of, yeah, that was kind of stupid. But I'm not talking about solely that. I am today. I am talking about how. The remastering of the Star Wars movies ruined one of the most interesting characters of Star Wars. Jabba the Hutt. Now I know what you're thinking, but Kirk, Jabba the Hutt is just a big fat slug. How can he be that great of a character? Ah. But you see, it is because he is a giant, fat, disgusting slug that makes him such a great character. Let's go back to the original Star Wars movie. Before it was called The New Hope, just Star Wars. The first time we see Han Solo, he's interacting with the character Greedo. And Greedo's talking to him saying, Hey, hey Han, you gotta pay off your debt to Jabba the Hutt, or else you know, we're gonna have to kill you ever. And Han's like, <laughs> And then he shoots Greedo, and then you know, he leaves with Luke to go to the Death Star. Now that seems like a pretty minuscule interaction, right? Okay, there's some guy that you know, Han Solo owes money to, no big deal. But then the second movie comes out. Empire Strikes Back mentioned Jabba the Hutt again. And not just that little itty bit in the beginning, but like towards the end of the movie, towards the dramatic part where Han Solo is frozen down in carbonite. And, you know, the reason why he was, it was done to him was because he owed money to Jabba the Hutt. And Jabba the Hutt was like, um, blah, 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 blah. And so Han Solo got frozen in carbonite and then shipped off to Jabba's palace. Then the third movie came out. Return of the Jedi. And that is personally my favorite Star Wars movie. But what was great about it was that for the first time within those three movies, we got to see what Jabba the Hutt looked like. See, the reason why the, the reveal of Episode Six was so genius was because in the first Star Wars and the second one, Empire Strikes Back, we never saw Jabba the Hutt. He was just this amalgamation, this his character. He was this mysterious monster that is constantly hunting down Han Solo and other people throughout the galaxy. This great crime lord. What could he possibly look like? And he's a giant fat slug. That was genius. The reveal of Jabba the Hutt was so incredible because he's not intimidating. He was built up to be this great, gigantic character. And he's just some fat slug dude. I mean, I mean, that's genius. But of course, 
when I talk about this reveal and this build-up of Jabba the Hutt, I'm talking about the original edits of the movie. Now, the re-release traditions, they kind of ruin it. Because within the new edit of Episode 4, they actually show what Jabba the Hutt looks like. And so then, because we see what he looks like, this, there's no suspense. We've seen him. That's it. We know that Jabba the Hutt is this giant fat slug. So it doesn't have the same impact that it did when trying to watch it in Return of the Jedi. And yes, it is true that Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, did have a reveal for Jabba. But you're not really supposed to watch Episode 1 first. You're supposed to watch the original trilogy and then watch the second trilogy to get the backstory of Darth Vader. But even so... Anyone watching Star Wars for the first time, they're not going to have that same impact of, oh, that's what Jabba the Hutt is. With such a great release in Return of the Jedi, it is kind of a shame to see it go to waste with those re-edits of the movie. But, as I said before, the people that hate Star Wars the most are the fans of Star Wars. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the... Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of Kirk Talk, and I will see you in the next one.